All right, so what do we have? 10 facts you may or may not know about the movie Set It Off. Queen Latifah. Played Cleo. Cleo. Mm -hmm. Vivica A. Fox. Frankie. Frankie. Jada, Jada Pink Pinkett Smith. Smith. <laughs> Play Stoney. Stoney. Kimberly Elise. TT. Yes. Nice. Set it off. I am pleased to report that the movie is still just as good. It is a true, like, classic. Number one. So the film was originally released November 6th of 1996. According to Box Office Mojo, they had a budget of like $9 million. Mm -hmm. This thing brought in 41 million worldwide. It's actually New Line Cinema's highest grossing film of 1996. So you know, like New Line Cinema, they're famously known for like Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So like the, the horror genre, they knocked it out though, 41 million. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. Number two, the film's director, F. Gary Gray, also directed the music video for TLC's hit song, Waterfalls, in the same year. Now, the year before, he directed the movie Friday. Friday, yeah. Which is also another New Line Cinema film. Yeah, yeah. Number three. In an older interview uh, with Takashi Buford, he's the one that wrote the story and wrote the screenplay. Um, he said, we took Set It Off to New Line Cinema. They rejected it three times. Man. And the reason they rejected it is that they thought black males would not support a film with gunslinging black females. That's crazy. But, you know, 27 years ago. It, it, was a, it was a different time. And you have to understand there was like no precedence for this type of film. Mm -hmm. um, you know, gunslinging men. But I, I imagine for some men, a gunslinging woman probably would be <laughs> the worst though. But I'm going to tell you, it really... It's great that they chose to take that chance right. because it paid off big time, yeah. big time. So number four, Will Smith helped Vivica A. Fox audition for her role as Frankie while on the set for Independence Day. And this is according to a 2020 interview that Vivica uh, did with Vulture. Mm -hmm. So as you guys know, Vivica A. Fox and Will Smith both starred in Independence Day. Right. Vivica played Will's uh, wife in the movie. Right. So uh, F. Gary Gray came on set and wanted Vivica to audition for the role as Frankie, and Will Smith helped her out with that. Yep, got her right together, coached her through it. So and we never F. Gary. What what does the F stand for? Fine. Oh, uh, I think it's Felix. Oh, but, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good try. Yeah. It was a good try. You, My, you're telling yourself a good try? Yeah, pat myself on the back. All right, number five. According to Vivica A. Fox, Frankie was originally supposed to be played by Rosie Perez. What? But she dropped out of the role for unknown reasons. Yeah, so, so I went and I looked and I was trying to see if there was something else that she was filming at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and who knows, maybe some of the things that got released, I saw uh, like two years later, there was some things that came out. So maybe, you know, they just took long with the filming and didn't release it. But okay. definitely the fact that she turned down that role paid big dividends for Vivica. Because once again, during this time period, can you name a more iconic group of women coming together and pulling off what they pulled off? Number six, Kimberly Elise made her feature film debut and set it off. And she was originally cast as a minor character before given a role as TT. You know, I think that during the time um, that they were preparing to start filming and casting, she was already living in LA. Mm -hmm. um, she was waitressing at the time. Okay. So very interesting to think that she got discovered and, you know, was expecting to play this much smaller role, just some little, you know, extra in the background. Mm -hmm. And for her to make this her true debut. Number seven. Queen Latifah had her first leading role in a feature film with Set It Off. Um, she considers it her favorite role of all time, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty cool. And then she recently did an interview with Drew Barrymore. Um, <laughs> now this is kind of funny. This is kind of funny. Um, so as you know, at the end of the film, she does die. Um, she went on to play roles in 1998 Sphere as well as 1999's The Bone Collector, 
where she, her characters also died. So she sat down with her lawyer and she's like, yeah, you going to put this in the contract. I'm not taking no more of these roles where they kill me because if they kill me off, how am I supposed to star in the sequel? Number eight, in the original script, Jada Pinkett's character, Stoney, and her brother were supposed to be drug addicts. F. Gary Gray saw this and they kind of rewrote the script so that it portrayed uh, Stoney in a better light. And it also okay. made more sense for the movie. It did. And, and I agree with that. Kind of looking back on her character and you as the viewer, the type of connection that you build. Uh, you see homegirl going through it and her mm -hmm. just wanting to take care of her brother and just trying to survive. And I think that your level of investment would have been much lower if it was one of these, she's got to redeem herself at the end. Right. She was fighting from the beginning and that resonated with us. So I think that was a good choice for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. Number nine, the accompanying soundtrack featuring Brandy, Queen Latifah in Vogue, Busta Rhymes, Shaka Khan, MC Light, and others went platinum in the same year. Man, soundtracks to movies. You okay. remember that? Bro, they used to be a thing. Like, yeah. So what was uh, one of the hit songs on the soundtrack? Oh, Don't Let Go in mm. Vogue. In Vogue. Man, you remember that? The biggest, the go, biggest go song. Ahead, hit, you know, go, go, go ahead and hit a little note for us. Huh? That, that's not how it goes. Oh, uh-uh. What's it gonna be? Because I can't pretend that sounded good. Mm-hmm. Mm, Don't mm. do that again. It's a good song. It's a good it's song. Number you one? Butchered it. And no, number it, one? It, no, I actually went number two. Number on the two? Words. Yeah, it was number two. Yeah. Oh, um, man. No, but but for real, that song was like in Vogue's, uh, in Vogue's last big song. Like yeah. their last top ten hit. Yeah. So, you know, but, you know, because of the success of that song, they did go on to release like another album. Right. So... But number one <laughs> on the chart, if you're asking, the only thing that could possibly beat that, Tony Braxton, Unbreak My Heart. So Tony Braxton was number one. Number one, yeah. And I think like the top six songs for that particular time frame, oh, all R&B songs. They were all R&B, yeah. R&B, they had R. Kelly up there, I Believe I Can Fly. Yeah. Black Street was up there, yeah. No mm -hmm. Diggity, Key Sweat. Mm -hmm and also Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, yep. As well, so. Yep, yep. Number 10. Did you know that Set It Off was adapted into a stage play? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Did you, did you check it out? It, it ran from 2018 through 2021. I saw the clips. Oh, okay. The uh, Brat and the, Cleo. The, the Brat played Cleo. Yes. And all of Atlanta played the rest of the characters. The rest of the celebrity Atlanta was yeah oh my gosh who who all uh kyla pratt mm -hmm. demetria mckinney keisha knight pull them keisha knight pull drew sedora drew sedora <laughs> um a few others um, leon leon was yeah, there yeah leon's always there <laughs> he's always there <laughs> he never ages yeah it's good <laughs> so any uh memorable scenes after rewatching the movie again <laughs> Um, I would have to say the scene that stood out to me, because I was mad, <laughs> when they go um, to the building that they're cleaning, Right. that's where they had hidden their money from one of the heists. Mm -hmm. So they arrive and Luther, their boss, is not there. They look in the vent, the money is missing. They're like, Luther took the money. They roll up on him at this hotel where he's entertaining someone. <laughs> Where is my money? I, ain't no, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, beat him down right now. Beat him up, please. He took your money. So what was your favorite scene? The most memorable scene from when I first saw the movie back in the 90s mm. to rewatching it again was just uh, when Cleo had to steal the um, Tahoe Suburban, whatever it was. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And they show a scene of just regular cars driving down that LA busy street. Yeah. And all of a sudden you see the the SUV just crashed through that glass window. Yeah. Because everything's silent and then you just hear a boom. Right, right. And, um, you know, I think a lot of movies in the 90s utilize that, that effect. Yeah. And, you know, it's still it's pretty impactful today. So Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, that's all we've got for you today. <laughs> that's it? 
That's it, bro. No more Easter eggs. No more secrets. I mean, maybe I got like like fifteen more. I don't know. Fifteen more. That's a lot. Right. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, leave a comment down below. Peace. Stop it. Ah. <laughs> they love it. No, they do not. Down under. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God.